Hello and welcome to another Scarred Cast Battle Report. Today I'm here in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, and I am playing the Ultra Smurfs. Quite literally. They are the Smurfs. They are blue, and they are very, very angry at the Dark Eldar for the last pounding that they have done to the Ultra Smurfs. So, deployment. We have Hammer and Anvil. We are playing Crusade with three objectives. One objective in that little forest. One objective in front of... <gasps> that's right. That's Gargamel's Chapel. We are playing in Smurfland. And the last one is right over to the flank. Deployed the Coven. Pretty straightforward forward tactics. And in reserve, I have a Razorwing, a 10-man Cavalite unit in a Raider, and a 3-man Blasterborn unit, ready for this. The Smurf Army of Mushroom Doom. They're all drop pods if you haven't gathered that already. We have four tactical squads. One of them with Papa Smurf, who just happens to be Marinius Kalgar. He's taken the Champion of Humanity um, Warlord trait, which means him and Urian might have a one-to-one -one fight sometime during the battle, which will be fun. Uh, Grandpa Smurf is the Dreadnought with a multi-melter. And of course, the Storm Talon. Check out these conversion work. This is beautiful army. This is the kind of thing that you should be created with. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll get started. The Smurfs do not steal. Dark Eldar, turn one. The entire army moved up and blasted into the Centurions and Tigris, putting one wound on Tigris once and leaving one Centurion left with one wound remaining because um, a lot of Venom firepower will do that to a unit. Don't worry, this will be a game. I'm not going to just wipe that unit out, if at all possible, so that we can actually play this out. And we'll be back right after turn one Ultramarines. Will the Smurfs be able to defend Gargamel's hideout from the Dark Elder? Ultra Smurf. I have to call them Ultra Smurfs for the rest of the game. Turn one, drop pods drop down. Two tactical squads, one combat squad. Uh, one blew up this raider, and one put a hull point uh, on that venom. The dreadnought missed the other venom. The other tactical squad all fired into that venom, uh, blew it up, killing six of the warrior unit that was in uh, the forest, uh, gaining first blood for the ultra smurfs, and the. Trueborn are not pinned, neither are the Rex, and they passed their morale test. So now we have to go on to roll for reserves. So we have a 10 man, uh, oh, 10 man squad of Cabalite Warriors. They don't show up. We have the Razor Wing that does not show up, which is a good thing. And then we have, because I have to wait for that Storm Talon to show up, and then we have the uh, Blasterborn to show up as well. And they do! Okay. Dark Eldar turn two. The Rex moved up and burned a lot of Space Marines with AP2 liquefy guns to charge one of the combat squads. He chose to pass his morale test because he knew that, that my Rex were on this side. If he fell back, I was going to catch them anyway. Um, my, I shot a lot into Tigris and the Centurion. They actually soaked up all the firepower this turn. Um, the Witches, I disembarked five Witches. They charged into the Dreadnought, put one hull point on, but failed to kill the Dreadnought. And that attack squad still has two marines left. The Blastborn showed up and tried to kill the Dreadnought but failed. And on this flank, two liquefy guns or three liquefy guns make short work of the tactical unit. And this guy is charging that. So we're going to see what happens as well. In combat, the Talos charged in and wrecked the drop pod. And now we're moving on to Ultramarine turn three reserves. Turn two reserves. Storm Talon. Comes in. Calgar. Comes in. And other squad. Comes in. So we had the Storm Talon, a drop pod full of Marines show up on that flank, and a drop pod with Calgar and Marines, or Papa Smurf. Papa Smurf. Um, with his gauntlets of doom. Uh, so we had a grav amp immobilize and put a hull point on that raider from fully bu uh, boosted Tigris's squad. And then uh, that unit wrecked. So blew up the radar and put one wound on a grotesque. In other news, we had two Trueborn go down and uh, they went to ground and they, they survived. One of these warriors went down. The Dreadnought charged into this Venom, blew it up and killed three, which is an explosion. My Rax only took two casualties from all the shooting that they received and that other Venom went down as well. So now we're moving on to Dark Eldar. Turn uh, three, and we have the Razorwing to show up. 
and it does, and we have the um, warriors to show up, and they do, and we'll be back right after this. And the game ends there. Sadly, uh, my opponent had to leave because of an emergency with family, so we were unable to finish the game. As it stood, the game uh, had really turned out to be quite a bloodbath with all the drop pods coming down and putting a lot of damage onto the Dark Elder army. Now it's a shame we weren't able to finish the game and next time I'm up in Kingston we are bound to have a rematch um, because later in the week while I was there I was unable to uh, get together with him and, uh, and have another one of these games. I just wanted to put the battle report up because it was such a fun game, the models were so great, we were having such a good time until, uh, you know, the unexpected happens. So I did want to showcase uh, some pictures from the uh, event that I was, from the game that I was going to turn into the tactical corner. So he failed to steal the initiative, which, you know, was good for me as I was able to move out with my army and really put a lot of damage onto the Centurion Smurfinators and the Tigarius who was uh, Lady Smith. The drop pods, um, unlike the last time I played against Ultramarines, came down, Tactical Doctrine put a lot of damage on some of my vehicles, gaining him first blood, um, really knocking down the amount of firepower I had. Then again, the big thing with that is he packed up and my liquefy guns were relatively unscathed. So I was able to really surround him with all the liquefy guns and you know, this is just before I shot with all liquefy guns. Though, you know, I rolled well for them. It's about a 50 50 chance for it to ignore marine armor. Wiping out almost 20 marines in one turn just with the flamers. Now, this meant that the reserves that he had to come in, of course, very reliable to come in with Tigarius, which with a space marine army is fantastic. You know, I don't know why you wouldn't take him. Um, you know, came down, could have done a lot more damage with uh, some of the rolls going a little bit more his way. And the Centurions, you know, knocking out key targets. So the game was developing into going to be quite a bloodbath, you know, a face-off between Urien and Papa Smurf, which was going to be really fun, and uh, the Grotas and his unit for that objective in the corner there that I was going to be boosting up a Raider Warrior Squad up to. On the other flank, the Dreadnought that was uh, proving to be unkillable against the Haywire Grenades. And, you know, just all in all, it was my turn, my move. So this is where I pose a question to you. What would you have done in my move? My reserves had come in, I was committed to the board, and I'd really like for you to let me know what you would have done in the comments below. As you can see my reserves coming in, Raider Squad, Razorwing, that's where I put them. Let me know what you would have done.